gentlemen, a good Sunday afternoon to you all. It's uh, one o'clock on this beautiful Sunday. Uh, with me in studio, I have Elenia Crivos. Uh, Chantal uh, Desjardins, unfortunately, could not be here, and she's not going to be here with us until the spring because she is off skiing in uh, Austria. Is it Austria? Austria, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and she didn't even invite us, Eleni. Can you believe it? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if we're big skiers, but that's okay. Yeah, have fun, I, I would have, you know, so. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Real Estate Show, everyone. I'm your host, Terry Kalakos, chartered mortgage broker and president of Northeast Mortgages. Uh, again, Chantal couldn't be here. In studio with me, I have Eleni Akrivos, chartered real estate broker and president of Northeast Realties. As well, I have Dr. Bak Nguyen. Uh, Dr. Bak Nguyen has 20 years of experience in the dental field and is on a quest to facilitate the well-being and the empowerment of health professionals. Uh, he's written over 17 books uh, covering entrepreneurship, leadership, philosophy, medicine, and politics. Welcome, Dr. Nguyen. Hi, Terry. It's a pleasure to be here. Excellent. Uh, looking forward to our show today because it's, it's actually a, a topic that uh, is very close and dear to my heart, uh, which is uh, uh, health practitioners and entrepreneurship uh, in general. So uh, it's going to be a very interesting show. Uh, don't forget, you guys can all join in the conversation as well by calling in with your questions at 514-790-800 or texting in your questions at 514-800. Uh, you can also watch and comment online on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash Northeast Mortgages where you can see all the craziness that happens behind the scenes, especially during the commercial breaks where I typically uh, tend to break something. So uh, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, so just uh, before we kind of get started on the show, there is a few market updates that uh, we want to cover. Uh, this week on Wednesday, the key overnight rate did not get raised. It stayed at 1.75%. Uh, uh, for those of you that follow my blog uh, on uh, Northeast Mortgage's website, uh, you'll see uh, why it, uh, it didn't go up. But uh, as the financial storm is kind of moving into the Canadian economy, uh, the Bank of Canada, as expected, kind of chose to forego on the rate increase as they once had promised would happen. And uh, the main reason for this is uh, from lower than expected GDP numbers and from the decision that Alberta government has taken to reduce oil production starting the 1st of January. So that's going to be uh, something interesting to see what's going to happen with the price of uh, oil. Uh, moving forward into 2019, uh, the banks are predicting that it's going to be a tempered increase in the rate. So there's not going to be anything crazy that's going to be happening. Uh, what's actually really interesting, Eleni, uh, who you have to deal with us crazy mortgage brokers on a daily basis, um, if you look at the bond market and what's happening right now, the bond market has actually dropped and it's currently at the lowest level that it's been in over a year, which uh, is kind of an indicator to me that come next year, especially once the buying season kicks in and people are off to the races to buy properties, uh, you're going to end up seeing uh, some interesting rate wars between the banks. Right now, the five-year fixed rates are, are pushing kind of high. They're up to the 369, 379 range. Uh, but I think that as next year kind of rolls around, uh, rates should start to drop off, especially considering uh, right now the banks are kind of padding their margins and uh, taking advantage of the fact that uh, rates were supposed to have been up. Uh, but uh, let's get some uh, word in from you. There's been a couple of market uh, news as well that are happening. Investors are buying uh, most of the mega project condo units in Montreal. What's going on with that? Well, you know, we had two, um, you know, articles or, or sets of news that came out in the last week that kind of contradict each other. Uh, so I believe that there's a big confusion. We talked about it a few shows ago. Big confusion in terms of um, foreign investment in Montreal. Um, are foreign investors buying up the big condos downtown? Yes, they are buying them up. Uh, what's the percentage? That's where we see there's a little bit of confusion. Uh, you have CMHC, which put out some stats, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been kind of following it since 2015 up until now. Uh, they're saying, you know, they're seeing an increase. Um, and then you have another article that came out that said, uh, it, you know, condos are not such great investments and investment vehicles in Montreal because, again, historically, you know, our condo market has been slow. This is typically, this is the first year that we're seeing a seller's market. Condos are flying off the shelves. Investors are buying condos downtown. So what's happening, right? What's what's really happening? 
um, from what I'm seeing, uh, you know, and other brokers as well that, that I speak to, foreign buyers are typically concentrating on the downtown core. Uh, they're buying small units. They're buying in buildings where rental is allowed. Mm-hmm. So that's really important because, you, as you know, the condo rules. Yep, and that's, that's right. another confusion. Not every condo building can be uh, purchased for investment. Okay, so we're talking about specific buildings, specific units. Usually it's smaller units. There's no mortgages involved in these as well, according to CMHC. Typically a foreign investor. Yeah, they're bought cash. Absolutely. Exactly. Yep. So they're, it, it's really a different. They're buying them. Why? Because, you know, uh, maybe countries that where they're coming from. They, there's there's no more investment opportunity there. Montreal right now, uh, if you look at, for example, Asian uh, websites, mm-hmm. it's looked as, you know, an, one of the number one places to invest. Why? Our prices are really low. Again, I, you know, we keep saying it across Canada, a condo in Montreal, it's like peanuts compared to Toronto and yep. Vancouver, the other main cities. So, Absolutely. yes, they, the condos are being bought uh, as investment. Um, they're saying about 2%. Some buildings, again, if we look at uh, buildings individually, up to 12% of um, condos are bought for investment. Yeah, you know what I uh, what you're saying was kind of echoed. I was in British Columbia this week. Uh, I had yeah. some meetings with some uh, mm-hmm. uh, Asian banks, uh, oddly enough, who are coming into Canada, and uh, we're looking to possibly uh, pilot some projects uh, with them uh, in Quebec and okay. in Ontario. Um, but the interesting thing is, is that they kind of echoed the same sentiment that they're like, well, the investors are moving uh, towards Quebec right now. You know, yeah. uh, the market is crazy in British Columbia. Uh, I met with uh, one gentleman who uh, happened to have a property in uh, the Trump International because uh, there's a part of it that is uh, condos and then there's a part of it that is hotel. And I okay. stayed in the hotel portion and um, he was staying. He lived in the building. And he's got this little unit. It's 1,300 square feet. Yeah. You know, it's on one of the high floors, 1,300 square feet. It's 3.2 million. Yeah. It's That's... crazy. Yeah. For it's 3.2 just nuts. million, you can buy like 10 condos or more in Montreal. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So... But this is this is where kind of I think the tide is going. I don't know yeah. whether or not it's, we're going to see uh, the values actually skyrocket to that point. I think that there is, you know, I think there's got to be more to it than just, you mm-hmm. know, the fact that they're building the condos. The condos yeah. are great, but there needs to actually be some work here, you know, uh, where I don't find that there's me- as many jobs as there would be in British Columbia or in yeah. uh, in Toronto. Well, <laughs> on that note, the job market, I mean, uh, the the other article that came out by CMHC, actually, there was one in La Presse as well that uh, listed seven reasons why Montreal is a, gl- a great place to invest. Right. And why people are investing here. Um, one of the reasons was apparently our, our job market has grown, sure. and has gotten a little bit stronger. Again, if we compare it to Toronto and Vancouver, it's is not it the as same strong? Thing. It's, it's not, not the same thing. thing. Yeah. But if we if they if they go back, I mean, you know, they go back and they say, oh, it's gone up, you know, point, you know, whatever percent. So it's getting better. Um, so this is, you know, but again, it's the people who are here, again in Montreal, the locals, are they buying the downtown condos? Not as much. So they're buying if they're going to live, they're younger, they're going to be living downtown. Okay, that was uh, Elenia Krivos. Uh, after the break, we will be chatting with uh, Dr. Bak Nguyen, dentist, author, and entrepreneur about the challenges that many health professionals face when it comes to entrepreneurship. Stay tuned. Uh, now, without further ado, we got Mark Shaloub at the CJAD 800 News uh, Traffic Center. Well, we have ourselves a couple of key slowdowns to carry southbound. You continue to be funneled onto the eastbound Ville Marie this weekend, and that's why you're feeling the heat for some 15 minutes from the Jean. What is up, Facebook world? What's going on? No, there's no one. There's no one answering. This is like our second show. What's that? This is like our second show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, if you guys have any questions, obviously. Oh, sorry, I'm not. I'm not allowed to lean back on my chair. Is that? Is that okay? My wife beats me if I lean back on my chair. So, uh, if anybody has any questions or comments, uh, of course, you know you can text them into the station, or you can post them directly online on uh, the CJAD website, uh, where we're going to be uh, going through them. Uh, By the way, mention the text line maybe after the, the break. The text line is 514-800. Not here, awesome. on the air. Whatever, well, no, here too, they can text us. So, or call us, text us, 514 You know what I just realized? I'm looking at myself here on Facebook. Having the headphones like this, I look like Princess Leia. <laughs> <laughs> so any questions about entrepreneurship? 
Kavala yeah. he's taking the reins. Yeah, Go, what else? do it. Do it. <clears throat> Why did you think it was important to do the show today? So, the challenge that I find that um, we have, and I mean, I think you can echo this, uh, but is that doctors are kind of taught uh, by employees almost to be employed they're not really taught how to actually be uh, business uh, owners and dentists and the challenges that I see personally as a mortgage broker is that a lot of times they don't have their finances kind of in order and they don't have things kind of together and I don't know what's your the problem is would be from that last time we, we spoke, uh, I had time to reflect on the, the matter. And the problem is with the doctor, you start with diagnosis first, then treatment plan, and then you can reevaluate. Well, in finance, you should you have you need to have your goal first, mm. then you have your course of action, and then you reevaluate. So mainly, uh, a doctor is starting from he's starting to build from the ground up. But financially speaking, that's not the way to go. You have to to have uh, a goal. And then you re reverse engineer everything you need to get to that goal. And uh, with that, you have a plan and you, have, you might have a chance to succeed. So when you start from one week after one from the ground up, it's impossible for you to get to wherever you want to be. Mm. And most of those people don't even know where they want to be. So uh, it, it's, it's a problem of approach, I believe, more than just, just education. Interesting. But isn't the problem because when she, that people don't know that? That's, I find, the challenge. So what you're saying is... We, yeah, we, only, we only figure it out after like they myself, don't know it I started and as a, they are not open to hear the criticism because they, they think that they realize. are the smart and yeah. they are doctors and if it works in medicine and they're saving life this should work everywhere not in financial in finance you need to go they don't to, need the vision they don't need the plan they don't need that Actually, everything is stopped in school, so you know you don't you don't have any vision. You're just applying a recipe that you learn, hoping for the best. Because yeah. I find in real estate, as real estate brokers, it's the same thing. You get your <coughs> license, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do real estate and get more clients and get more money and just go that way. But have you thought about growth? Have you thought about diversifying your business, changing your financial plan? Like we don't think about it until we're in five years, ten years. We're like, well, where am I going with this? And one of the big thing in finance is. Uh, Warren Buffett said it's a, there's 10,000 ways to make money. Mm -hmm. They're all hard to find. <laughs> well, in medicine, there's only one way to save people. So if you stuck with the, that one-way mentality, it's very hard to adjust. And financial, uh, in finance, everything is how you adjust yourself, right? how you adapt. Sure. Yeah. Things are changing, how, you, how fast you adapt before you disappear. That's true. William's looking for somebody. Uh. Oh. <coughs> on CJAD 800. And we are back with Dr. Back. I'm sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and by the end of it, I'll say, I'll be back. <laughs> That's it, exactly. I like it. Oh my god, I can't believe I actually said that. That's uh... very cool, Terry. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Doctor Back. Uh, it's quite impressive that you've been a dentist for twenty years now, and you also have written seventeen books. I mean, you know, tell us a, a little bit about your journey. Well, my journey it's uh, not that special. I'm a, I'm an Indian, so mostly when people look at me and say, "Why are you a dentist?" Because my parents asked for <laughs> Because you're what? Your parents? My parents asked for it. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, I've been through that journey and uh, I succeed despite myself. Um, and because I wasn't cut to be a dentist or a health professional, I, I suffered much through school. Mm. I had a problem to stay focused, to have a problem to keep my interest up. But as an outsider, if I can say, I was very um, lucky that mm. the profession adopted me as one of their own. And now after 20 years... I still have that feeling that I'm not part of the profession completely. And that allowed me to bring uh, maybe a view from the outside. Yes. But knowing things from the inside. So that was the uh, the uniqueness that I bring on the table. Very interesting. You know, um, I've met a lot, of, a lot of dentists, a lot of doctors. I've had the, uh, uh, you know, I've been fortunate that my, you know, working at Northeast, uh, you know, Prior to that, I was working at the Vic. I've I've 
worked in the medical field for many years, so I have a lot of friends that are in the doc in the uh, medical world, and some of them are ridiculously financially responsible, and others really are are not uh, at all. And it has nothing to do with whether or not they're um, re responsible people. It just kind of has to do a little bit with the training, right? Um, I'll have people that will come in and they just are, are, they won't even qualify for a condo, you know, and we've had, when I was in your office recently, I had this conversation with you where we've had dentists that have come in and they're just, their stuff is just so all over the place that they don't qualify for even a condo, but yet then we have the other extreme. So you, during the break, you were kind of alluding to something. You want to kind of repeat that for the listeners? Man, I'm, I'm going to get rocks through at me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's good. Listen, there's a hitman outside that's waiting for you, but it's all good. All right. So mainly uh, we, we talk about how dentists and doctors in general sometimes have a difficult time through for the uh, the finance mm -hmm. part of their life. And many believe it's it's not just because they have good credit and they just boy. It's mainly because the way that they've been taught at school. Mm -hmm. In medicine, you you start with a diagnosis, then you have a treatment plan, and then you have the revelation phase where you can just see what what, what went wrong. In finance, you need to start with the gold, and then you reverse engineer everything. So it's like you starting as a dentist or doctor, you, you try to build from the ground up. Mm -hmm. While in finance, you need a plan. You're starting from the top down. So you, you you know where you're going, and then you reverse engineer to have a course of action, and then you course correct every single time and at every single step to get to that point. So uh, it's, I believe that most doctors are building, but in reverse. Okay. This is my point of view. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder uh, if there's uh, if there's anyone else that's kind of shares the same uh, uh, sentiments as that. Uh, so your new book, uh, it's called Professional Health, correct? Yes, it's Professional Health. Yeah. Uh, you co-wrote uh, it with uh, quite a few other big names in the health industry. Uh, what's the book about? Mainly the book, it's it's not about financial, it's about the quest of happiness. Because okay. we, uh, we know that most white coats, this is how we call doctors, eventually will hit the wall of depression and mm -hmm. sometimes will even go further to to kill themselves. And it doesn't make sense because those people are, work, are giving their life doing good things. They have so such a good vibe saving the world, healing the world. And also they, they also have that thing of you're part of the elite. So mm -hmm. it's like everything is perfect to them. But why are we all hitting a wall eventually? So uh, in the book, I don't have any answer, but we're raising the question. It's it's a, it's a something that it's not just good, but we need to talk about, and not because we wear a white coat that we don't we're not allowed to have problems. And I believe that the main thing that is lacking here is the lack of humanity. We choose that profession because we want to care for people. We want to care for ourselves. And the profession has been evolved in such a way that it's about everything. Protocols, it's about finance, it's about money, it's about research, it's about formation. But the human, it's so in the back of everything. It gets lost. And it's not just get lost. It's you're not allowed to. Sure. Uh, you know that as a dentist, if you take a false move with a patient, it's, it might sound like you're not professional. Right. You have a mask, you have your glasses, you have your gloves. That person is looking to get reassured. Hmm. He's looking to have some insurance. It's like, just, just touch his shoulder and say, he's gonna, everything's going to be fine. Yeah. That doesn't take much, but we don't do that anymore. It's not even thought at school. It's not even something that is appropriate. Yeah. So if that's not taught in school, definitely finances and everything else are really not taught in school. And one of the things that I've actually noticed with a lot of the dental client, uh, dentists that are our clients and even doctors, again, um, again, there's the ones that are very fiscally responsible. Those ones tend to be the ones that are second or third or fourth generation dentists, right? So they've been taught by their grandfather or their father how to actually be more kind of uh, fiscally responsible, if you will. Uh, whereas the other ones, the, the ones that are newer, are relying on accountants who, in some cases, I find don't really have much business kind of advising them. <laughs> um, I've, I've never understood, you know, where people, people that make a lot of money, they'll go and they'll get advice from someone that makes 
you know, not even a quarter of what they make. And they're they're So that's, that's a whole other show. People have heard me kind of rant about that, but that's, I'm not going to get into that now. Anyways. Um, so it's, we'll, we'll get a little bit more into it. I also want to get your feedback, Eleni, uh, about real estate brokers. Uh, you know, one of the things that I always say at the office, if you think that it's hard, life is hard, not having money, uh, life is a hundred times harder when you actually have money and you're not able to uh, use it properly. So uh, we're going to take a break. On the other side of the news, uh, we're going to be talking again uh, with Eleni Akrivos and Dr. Bak Nguyen uh, about entrepreneurship, uh, health practitioners, and uh, dentists and doctors speaking out about uh, being an efficient entrepreneur and real estate investor. The Real Estate Show is brought to you by Northeast Mortgages. You bought the plane tickets. Now where to park? Reserve early online. Save 10 to 35% and park just... Uh, own, uh, like, dentists, uh, I think do you find that they, that they get bored that and they want to, uh, like, for example, working. invest in real estate and do other stuff? Because they... No. Most people will invest not because they are bored, it's because they are no, it's people working. losing out on something. Let me log off. And that's the problem with most bathrooms and business. Okay, I make a lot of money, I'm paying mm. taxes, the break and I have money to do. What should I do? So we have a, we have a break now. Losing the fortune is going to... That's pushing them to do... Eleni, do you have, uh, do you have the, the, the... The texting console is in front of you? Mm, hold on, it's a little white thing with the... Ah, oh, it's open. Yeah, here. I have... Do you say text? I do not. It says it's just, uh, no. no. It seems like it's down for both of you. It seems it looks empty to me. I don't know. This, oh, this usually says it's a phone call and a name. That thing. Oh no, that you're talking about just calls. There's another one. There's a texting oh. console. I just see the one for the phones. David, is the texting uh, console not working? Do you know. You know the one with the little phone that has the phone call. List. That's all I see. I don't know. I'm getting error messages on it. I'll try again. No, it's not. So they're so they're investing basically. Not they, all of them, but most of them have been investing without putting the right time to know what they're doing. So they're gonna just run from someone. And Terry mentioned something: is the, the the one that the most the most responsible no. are from the parents. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's, that's not the way to evolve. Of, that's that's in, not the way to evolve. Yeah, but that's in a lot of industries, I find. For, you know, like even in real estate, for example, if your family was in real estate, you already you already have the, the little setup. You know, you don't have to reverse engineer and do all that. You already have a, a good base. You'd be surprised right? though. My but family was in real estate. Well, yeah. I was in real estate, and when I was in school, I promised myself never to touch that. Because uh, working in the way that they managed it, I wouldn't touch it. And you were like, yeah, you want to. And after a while, I said, man, okay, they they weren't doing the right thing, but the money's still there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you also choose to sometimes go do your own thing. But I mean, if you have the base there, it's it's helpful. I think that the, the, the main thing is, uh, up to lately, you can just do the same thing over and over again and what's working. No. It's now, not. with technology, yes, that's things a are good, going so fast. Yeah, that's a good point. Things have evolved. Is yeah, it's, going it's not just the market has evolved. The industry but, has also yeah. grown. Yeah. So it's not working as much anymore. And the, the errors, you, you see them... As, uh, as you get into it. Well, that's one of the challenges in our industry that I, I, I see is the evolution and the change. Like, I've been doing real estate for 16 years, and every year to two years, literally, I have to change not only how I'm doing my business, how I'm dealing with clients, but even, like, my own investments. Like, you know, there's the market, there's the investments, but then there's the business. It evolves. Yeah. It changes. Like, right now, it's a seller's market. Two, three years ago, four or five years ago, when the mortgages you know changed or whatever it was a slow market you have to you have to like evolve your business you and guys might not have that challenge but we, we have that no, challenge. but we still but, we but have because to of technology, technology outside yeah. that's true so we have to learn like most of the time you know in the united states they are very aggressive yeah compared to so you have to learn so you have it open yeah. on your site you i have the phone thing open oh on this no not the phone thing i don't see it the other thing Come see you don't it. see it okay now it's uh I don't see it. It's not working. I only see the phone thing. But yeah, I have heard that from a few doctors that I know as well. And, and in terms of like technology, oh. it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. Like yeah. keeping up with... Because right now you have the knowledge of the whole world accessible at your fingertips. Yeah. Before it's, it's like the key. It's actually almost it's overwhelming. Tip, it's, it's almost yeah. overwhelming. You're like, okay, I have like five softwares I can use. Now you have like 50. Which one do I use? Which one will... Yeah. 
There's not one. That's that's actually a challenge and yeah, and technology. I like that angle that he's taking. The, that, that's a challenge for everybody. That's why I mentioned that if you have a goal, whatever tools you're using, that be fine. If you do not do not have a goal and you're trying to learn from every tool one at a time, you screw. He's <laughs> just screw. Facebook people, you have. Do you have access to ask them some questions? Let's see what we have here. Do we have any? Well, the texting console was down. Oh, okay. Well, Mark Amaral wants to know if I broke the texting machine. Yes, I broke the texting machine. No, no, you didn't break it. No, I did not break it. It's not just send it. Share it in um, test, it's not just. No, no, it's not working. It's not working. What's that uh, text? Which you have Carry northbound, which is closure 20 west of the top. Could they say anything? Could they say anything? Discount code for Sports Experts. I don't know how they're on. Fire it off. No, the problem is that everybody's out doing their Christmas shopping right now. No, the texting console is broken. No, the texting console is broken. Then there's texts coming in. Sorry, actually, uh, I was nice and cozy and warm. He <laughs> was stuck in between. I was like, oh, it's so warm. <laughs> I have cold blood, cold blood, but warm heart. Uh, every time I like that. Clients, I like that. Every time I have clients, they're like, my hands are frozen. You know what I? <laughs> so one one client told me. He goes. Uh, one client told me he goes, cold hands, warm heart. I said, that's me. Yeah, I don't do. You know. This newscast yeah. is brought to you by Renopco and Air Miles Reward Miles. Get one Air Miles Smile, both of you. $40 you spend. Uh, smile and dial. Are we talking? Oh, yeah, you're talking. Are we, are we yeah, yeah, having a conversation? Talking, yeah. Smile we can't hear. <laughs> we can't hear with this off. We're like... Are we still coming? Or no, they're taking pictures okay. and I'm like, we're pretending to talk. Right now. Oh, pretend. Yeah. Missed yeah. that part. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, why is supposed to be talking? I'm a doctor. I cannot pretend. You know that. <laughs> Yeah, so I like the angle about the uh, the challenges and the evolution of, of um, even the phone is up. The phone is. Uh, yeah, not so much for getting textures and colors. Just everything is down. Yeah, is it possible the Ethernet uh, cable has a problem here? No, the phone um, is down. The, uh, are you on Facebook? Yeah, you're on Facebook. How do you spell oh, your name? That's completely down. Yeah, that's back. That's not the right Look, back. Is waiting for the doctor. Doctor, like that. Uh, do I put a spade? Oh, yeah, there you are. Yeah. Oh, even this is down, no? Oh, no. Hey, drop to that point, Nifka. Where is that? 3.9k likes. Really? Yeah. Okay, I just learned something. <laughs> For what? 3.9k no. likes, buddy. Come on. I've went. Awesome. On his oh. Facebook. No. No. We're down. It's all good. What I'll do is I'm going to get... It's all good. It's all good. Okay, so then don't mention any call in or text in. So seeing as they're both down. Find a last minute gift for them. Ask to, <laughs> for people to send the questions through Facebook. You got a couple of personal the text messages. But changing the word from a dental chair. Yeah, that, I've, I've seen that somewhere, I think, on Facebook. That was bold, though. That was bold. I, I got rocks through on me. Oh, yeah. Who do you think you are to say that? Come and see me. So, Terry, which... He's going to shoot the question at... Uh, you're going to shoot the question at Eleni for... Uh, what do you want to come back with after the break? We're going to talk about... Uh, uh, Eleni, do you find that many real estate brokers who are obviously self-employed have a hard time being entrepreneurs? So I'll come to that one for you. What about uh, what about them even getting a mortgage for their own house? Actually, I'm getting these yeah, questions absolutely. from my students now. They're worried. They're so like, maybe you could mention that, Eleni. Yeah. They were actually saying, uh, should we? Buy, they were actually asking, should we buy a house now before we become self-employed? Is it going to become harder? And I'm like, yeah, it's going to become harder. I so mean, then, Terry, shoot the question to Eleni, and then after that, just read the text you got personally, mm -hmm. seeing as the text. And console the yeah. Oh, you got a text, cool. There was more text coming in, but uh, the phone is down. This guy is, is, is down. Yes, I'm good. Is it possible you broke it? Anything is possible with me now. At least it wasn't me. <laughs> and and your life, and they have proof. <laughs> yeah. It's okay.
And we are back with Dr. Back. Sorry, again, I had to say it. It's, it's going to happen. I love a it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so before the break, we were talking about uh, entrepreneurship. Um, and Eleni, there's a question that I want to kind of shoot out to you. And it kind of ties in with what I always talk about. And I always tell people that, you know, if it's hard, if you think life is hard not having money, life is a lot harder when you have money and you don't know how to manage it. Right. And it's something that I mentioned to the brokers at the office all the time. Um, so in your um, opinion, so do you find that you know, many real estate brokers who are obviously they're self-employed have a hard time being entrepreneurs and big time. Yeah, big time. And I see it as I don't see it first. You see it in year one of mm -hmm. being a real estate broker. But then, as you said, as you grow and you have more clients, OK, you're making a you know a bit more income and your business grows, then it's well, how are you managing that business? And then it's like Dr. Back said before. We all start from scratch, from one, and then we try to build the business up bigger. So the challenges, there's like so many, but I would say like the top three are, you know, you don't have a plan. So mm -hmm. like Dr. You know, Box said, you don't have the, the plan because you're just starting and you're just starting and doing the work and just making, you know, making commissions or whatever. So you don't have a plan. You don't have a financial plan. You don't know that out of each commission, for example, you should be taking 30%, putting it into a savings another 30 percent keep it for taxes because you haven't paid the tax man yet so you don't have the financial plan you don't have the the business plan and you don't have the vision because you just started you don't have the the vision for the future you know how is this business going to evolve what am i going to do with it so there's i mean there's tons of challenges yeah um and one of the challenges that i i'm hearing a lot also from my new students right now is can i get a mortgage because i'm going to be self-employed as as a real estate broker and that's one of the you know the challenges you're working for yourself, technically speaking, you're your own business, right? Yep. That's how right. do you, how do you get a, a mortgage when you, when you're self-employed, Terry? It's a, it's a good question. I have <laughs> I have no the, clue. Well, it, this is us. okay. So, so this is where it's important that you actually get the advice uh, from the right people, right? Yeah. So a lot of times people are gonna, you know, and this is not to uh, just FYI, everyone. The uh, texting console is actually down right now, so uh, I'm not gonna be getting those hate texts. Uh, if you send them to me, because they do come in when I make a comment like I'm about to make. They'll get you on Facebook. Yeah, they'll get me on Facebook. So um, unfortunately, what ends up happening is um, a lot of times business owners, uh, whether they're doctors, whether they're dentists, whether they're lawyers, whether any type of professional, including real estate brokers and mortgage brokers, what they're going to do is they're going to go out and they're going to use the same accountant that they've always used and they're going to use the same accountant that you know is running a you know taking care of some little company's businesses and they're going to treat you the same way that they treat the other guy and the whole idea and the whole philosophy that they have is well let's just write off as much as we possibly can so that you don't pay taxes it doesn't work like that in the real world okay that's fine and dandy so that you're not paying taxes but wake up people you need to actually be able to qualify for real estate right so for myself i mean i could very easily sit there and between all the companies and everything write off every single penny that i'm earning i don't mm -hmm. and uh, actually we use a very large uh, accounting firm and every year i get the same look from the accountant where he's like you're the first client that i have that actually wants to pay taxes mm -hmm. it's not that i want to pay taxes i have to pay taxes because if I don't, it is impossible for me as an entrepreneur to be able to qualify for a mortgage if I want a mortgage. If I don't want a mortgage, it's a different conversation. Yeah. But if you want to invest in real estate as a business owner, exactly. you have to show some income. Exactly. That's, and, one, that's one of the challenges. Yeah. And and the other thing that you have to look at, I mean, the government is, is at a point where, the, you know, they do lifestyle audits. They do all kinds of stuff, right? So even if you say, well, I don't want to buy anything. I'm just going to go off and rent something. Well, I'm sorry. If you're uh, off renting a house in Westmount and you're paying, you know, I don't know, $10,000 a month and you're declaring an income of fifty thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. there's there's a disconnect there. You know, your Lexus payment plus your you know house in Westmount, it's not going to yeah. uh, the numbers are not going to work. But th this is one of the the huge challenges that we have. You know, taking advice from the wrong people, uh, not being able to handle stress properly, and you know maybe uh, Baki, you can kind of chime in on this as well. Where I find that a lot of times entrepreneurs and self-employed people because they're not trained 
to handle stress properly, they make a lot of mistakes. Thank you. I was waiting for my turn to talk. <laughs> <laughs> But you, you mentioned something about paying taxes. I yeah. will tell you something. As an entrepreneur, the most valuable thing you have is your credit. Sure. And most people just struggle trying to have the banks backing them up. And your, your, your credit is as good as your last tax income. Yeah. Uh, so th this is mainly the, the way it goes. It, if you're honest, you might have a way to build. If you just trying to beat the system, you're not part of the system anymore. Right. So this is the, the part where usually people, and you mentioned that, you no, know, it's sometimes uh, the, the professional that are very responsible, learn from their parents, which learn from their parents. It's, it's like, yeah, that might be working 20 years ago. Today, things are evolving so fast that if you're not adapting and you're still r repeating the same recipe, you're in for a bad quarter. A very bad quarter. Absolutely. And right now, the, the credit that you have is not just for mortgages, but it's for your business, it's for anything else. You don't have a credit, you don't have the banks backing you up, you're out of the system. And if you're out of the system, there's only one thing. You have the money coming in, you have all the expense, and then you have 50% taxes, and then you spend. That's right. It, it's, it's very hard to build from there. It's very, very, very hard to build from there. For sure. We got a. We actually got a text before the uh, the console was uh, was out. And uh, very interesting subject. I'm a doctor, but it's very taboo for me uh, to tell anyone I'm, to tell anyone I am not able to run my business effectively. Uh, thanks for bringing it to light, John. So it's. Is that because biz as business owners and, and, you know, obviously you can tell us we don't have business training. That's another challenge. So when we, we go to school to become dentists, to become real estate brokers, lawyers, etc., we do not have training as business owner. How do I manage my business? Do I get an external firm to, do I get an assistant? So one of the for real estate brokers, when I, what I tell new real estate brokers now, for example, is from year one, get an assistant, get somebody to manage certain things, right? So like Dr. Bach was saying before, set up your, your, how you want it first and then work. So set up your goal. How do you want your business to work? And then work towards that instead of starting from scratch and kind of building up, right? I mean, do you, do you feel like we don't have enough business training as, as business owners? I think that no business owner has a business training. That's I Usually you, you get trained percent. to get uh, a job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. Uh, when you're a business owner, you learn on the field, you learn on the ground. But Dr. John, thank you so much for the question. And I can tell you that you don't have to be ashamed. You're not alone out there. You have the courage to speak out. And most of us will benefit from the fact that we know something that we don't know. Mm. The worst thing is to think that what we have and what we know, it's, like, it's appropriate when it's not. And just like Terry said, you have to have the advice from the right people. And usually, as dentists, we are very spoiled with our credit because we, we do make money. Usually, we're responsible. We don't, we don't touch bankruptcy. And because of that, there's money throwing at us. And with that kind of money, if you don't know what to do with it, then you're a the slave to that money. So it's very important for you to hang, to hang with the right people and take your advice from the right people because the average crowd will not be able to understand what you face. And then if you just don't speak up, uh, it's hard to ha ask for help when nobody knows that you're in trouble. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. And we've all been through this. We've all been through this. I'd like to uh, talk a little bit uh, a little later on ab about your uh, MedEx uh, clinic because I love that place. I walked in a couple of weeks ago and I was blown away. So I want to learn a little bit more about that uh, in a bit. Uh, now we're just going to head on over to the CJAD Traffic Center with uh, Mark Shaloub. Well, we still have a slow go to carry southbound from the Jean Talon entrance all the way until you're funneled onto the eastbound Ville Marie with the closure 50 million. <laughs> Medex. 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 Hey, this is pretty fun. It is. I love this. And it goes really fast, right? Yeah. yeah. What are you thinking? So Facebook World Texting now. Console is back up. Is it? Yeah. You're good. <laughs> Myra said, uh, Myra says, good show. Thank you, thank you. Great show. You're on live. Yeah. You're on live. Oh, you're on live now. Yeah. You're live, live. You're live. Live. <laughs> you're next door. Right? But, buddy, last time you stole my thunder. Today it's my turn. But I have a question for you, live. So, when you say you're new and you said it at the beginning and you had to be a dentist, is that just 
Like, it's because your family... No, it's not a joke. No, I know it's not a joke. I'm asking you, is that something like when you, from when you were a little kid, your parents were like, you're going to be yeah. a dentist? No, and I'm not a little kid. It's, it's, it's more profound than that. <laughs> from it's, the womb. Uh, <laughs> it's, my parents come here in 75. Okay. With all the Venice people coming in, yeah, and they lost everything. Okay. So they're looking at each other and say, okay, now the only thing that's affordable is education. Yeah. So they all aim for the next generation to become better. Yeah. So all the wounds, all the loss, everything that they have endured mm -hmm. is not transferred to us. Yeah. So when you say you hear that, oh, and as an immigrant, your life is different. <laughs> it is different. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so it, it's like, yeah, okay, you have to make it not because you're smart, because it's the guy next door made it. Yeah. Because yeah. you're because you because well, your cousin made it. Yeah. So, and this is how this is how they're gonna make it is by you making it. But the, the, the same thing is, they are so hard on us, so we will train as champions just to beat the average every single time because yeah, somebody else was there. But no, everything stopped the day you arrived and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the, uh, the license. <laughs> Most people that are very trained see, see what I have to, do don't keep that kind of edge. She just yeah, yells at me. They get the license no, and then it's like, okay. On a fait comme 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 on a spend 20 years of your life training to do something, and the more time, don't stop there. Work together, like and the yeah. mindset, you know it's good for two years. She knows, know. every, she knows exactly business, what I like want to say before I actually say it. Okay, how can I it. grow? How exactly. can I do better? How can I do better with my money? How can I, you know, grow in the future? It's, it's hard to keep that. It's, it's part of it, I think, is motivation. It's part of it. It's like... If you want one of my secrets, ask yourself the other question. Yeah. <laughs> what if I don't do this? What if I, I don't have money? What if I don't have success? What if I don't have a job? Yeah. Things are way easier after. Yeah. Yeah. Esco Carpets has the largest selection. Oh, it's still alive. You are alive. It's always live. You're alive, and we're live. So you're double live. You're live there, and we're live on our live. The cool thing, I'm still thinking well before I speak. No, it's okay. When you're on Facebook, you don't have to think before you. No. That's when I drop my f bombs. Everything. There's more reactions. Exactly. Yeah. But for those listen to us, if you want to get grounded, have a kid. You see that life, it's way different after that. After you have a <laughs> it's kid. It's way different. Yeah, yeah. A thousand percent. As yeah. soon as you have a kid, you stop asking yourself the silly question. The whole thing that you have to solve, it's in front of you and say, okay, next, 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 next. And then, okay, I still have half of my day. <laughs> But don't say that to your wife. Never tell that to your wife. <laughs> uh, honestly, I think that that's that's what uh, that's what actually centered me is having a child. You had before, said that before. Yeah, before sure. that, I wasn't. Did you know the speaker? I have it in my headphones just so that uh, we're able to have a conversation. Um, yeah, I used to. I used to be all over the place, and then as soon as uh, Alexander came came around, I had to like actually start getting uh, responsible. Focused. Focused, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Is it a fake scene? Aging team, Terry Kalakos and Eleni Akrivos on CJAD 800. And welcome back, everyone. So uh, before the break, we were talking about uh, health uh, practitioners and entrepreneurship, dentists and doctors speaking out about being an efficient entrepreneur and real estate investor. So uh, Dr. Nguyen, tell us about your innovative clinic, uh, innovative clinic, MDEX. <laughs> See, I said it correctly. I didn't say my wife yelled at me during the break. So yeah. <laughs> thank you. And now she's, I'm getting like the look. <laughs> so so many, where does, where does start? And Bex, it's mainly we want to find a way to change the world through dentistry. Okay. And since most of us has to go to the dentist somewhere in their life, uh, have you noticed that this is one of the most expensive hours you're spending? And it's still exactly like it was 30 years or 50 years ago? Absolutely. So mainly uh, the, the, the whole thing was the fact that we have been set up, and we say we, I say dentist, has been set up to, has, to have the, the most um, structure possible and it was not necessary right now if you look you go outside and you look at the, a corner of a street when you're not downtown you have at least three clinics over four corners yeah and if you look at the stats most of the doctors they are about 10 doctors for one operation room mm -hmm. and the best place that goes to seven 
to 1 or the worst place, let's go to 15 to 1. In dental, wherever you're going to look at, you have about three or four operation rooms available by dentists. This is there's something wrong here. There's something wrong and there's, uh, who's paying for the waste? Because to keep an, an inventory, an operation room, it's about three to 400 an hour, 24-7. Wow. So mainly this is just spread out over the mean. And even if we make money, for the time that we're not using it, who do you think are paying for that? Dentists and patients. So at at MDEX, we 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 know that we this is not sustainable for long term, and especially with the millennium coming in, they will not be working as hard as the last generations. On top of the add on top of it that right now we have a shortage of labor. You cannot go with such waste having five secretaries doing the same thing, and then saying okay I don't have enough staff just to just keep running. Mm. So we we'll have to be smart in that and the rest of the world has learned to share, to put things in common, to have resources put so we can leverage over the, the, the force of the union. Well, dentists are still very independent. I know in Quebec, it's a good thing. I'm an independent too, but no, here we we'll have to be smarter. So the idea of MDEX is we are a corporation which is gonna host micro enterprise. So instead of a dentist having to own their walls and their equipment, which is the, the, the thing that has no value by the end of the lease. And it actually costs the most amount of money, right, at the end of the day? Absolutely. Yeah. They're going to own what is the core of the business, the relationship with the patient. The rest of it, it's just going through just as a hotel, and you have privilege of operation, and you can have the best practice whatsoever because you are just paying for the overhead that you need. And most people will not be practicing more than three days a week, four top. Trust me, I try to do more. <laughs> right, it, it's hard to keep up. Sure. So uh, the idea is, if you don't use that kind of money and you still want to own your own house, it's just like house and condo. Yeah. You want you want a pool, you want to have the big terrace, and but you don't have to 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 have it all the time. You can share. So MDEX is the same concept behind. It. So it's like a it's a shared space for dentists to come in and work and actually uh, focus on what's actually important, which is. The client, the patient care, the client care, um, as opposed to focusing on the daily operations of a business, um, which they still have to to a certain degree, but they don't have that crazy overhead that the typical dentist would have, mm -hmm. which at the end of the day will allow them to be able to take more money at home, uh, declare more revenues, and actually. Uh, show some more kind of financial responsibility. Fan fantastic. So we, we talk a lot about yeah. money here, but I think there's this one thing else that we have to mention. It's time. Sure. Yeah. In a system like Index, we are freeing a lot of time for a professional to all actually have a life. If they like to, to work more, they can. But if they don't, they can enjoy whatever they want. And since you don't have to be in the office 24-7, then you have at least half of the time to do whatever you want. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, time is more valuable than money. And uh, I agree a, a thousand percent. I love it. Um, okay. Amazing. Eleni, three important pieces of advice you want to give to entrepreneurs out there. What would it be? Hot seat. The Let's number go. one is honestly, and it's hard when you're first starting. I know because I see new people starting out. Have a vision. Have a long term. Like create your one year vision five-year vision, 10-year vision. I had never done that when I started. And um, it, it's the most important thing because you you know where you want to go instead of, okay, I got my license. I'm going to start my business. Have your vision. Uh, number two, you said it, you both said it, get advice from the right people. It took me so long to get the right accountant to set up things and to, you know, I'm, I'm not an accounting expert, but I own a business, so I have to be accountable, mm -hmm. right? And financially responsible. So get somebody to help you with your finances, set, set that up. Um, and the third thing I would say is um, have a kind of goes with the, with the vision and, and the finances is put your plan down on paper. Like, what do you actually want to do? So, so for example, you know, Dr. Bach is explaining his, you know, his way of doing his business, real estate, mortgages, other businesses, there's different ways to do your business. Okay. And, and sure. we're seeing it in mortgages and real estate a lot. So yeah, have, have a business plan. All right, sounds good. Dr. Buck? I'll be doing the same thing I'm doing at school. I'm going to copy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so about vision. Ditto. <laughs> Any mention about vision? I'll try. Yes, have a vision, but also be open mind enough to try and to adjust yourself. Because usually when you you have a vision, is what you know today. As you'll be advancing, you'll be changing. 
take mm. advantage of that knowledge and just don't get just stick with what you you wrote on paper about hanging with the right people i cannot agree more of that hanging with the right pe- people would just give you the impression that you are not alone mm. and nobody knows if you're doing you right in the future you're creating something new nobody has the answer of what you, you're doing you just need the feeling that you are not alone yeah mm-hmm. and that will help and on writing your pi- your plan on paper unfortunately i disagree with that but mm. i will tell something write on paper and try to beat it mm. as soon as possible i like that agreed as an entrepreneur this is actually the recipe that will get you where you need to be to embrace your destiny awesome i would i would Thank add to that me. as well where i agree with what you're saying where you got to have the plan you got to have the vision but at the same time we get limited by what we think what's between our ears so whatever plan you put in place i always say multiply it by 10 and that should ultimately be your goal yeah guys we're out of real estate uh as our good friend dan laxer says mm-hmm. uh for anyone that wants to reach uh, myself or eleni uh, you can uh, call us at the office 514-680-4674 or you can visit us online at northeast mortgages uh, ca uh, as well as northeast realties uh, ca um, if you're on Facebook, please uh, visit us online and you can uh, like our page, uh, which is uh, facebook.com slash Northeast Mortgages. And for those of you that want to see what's going on here, uh, you can visit our YouTube channel and subscribe if you haven't, which is newsonthego.ca. Uh, thank you for listening, everyone. See you next week. The opinions expressed in the preceding program were provided for general information purposes only and should not be construed as advice from us. Terry. Yeah. On Thank you so time. much. That was yeah. useful. Yeah. On fire. Good job, Terry. So any last words for the Facebook world? Terry guys, what do you think? Post with the do, most. Do we have yeah. Chantal or no Chantal? What we do you love think? Chantal, but we, we love, love Chantal, too. but you know, she's skiing right oh, now, and we are like here, so you know. La, last words for Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. I'll be back. Yeah. I'll be back. I want to say that online. <laughs> on, on air. <laughs> Honestly, I really enjoy doing the show with, uh, with with Terry. And again, hats off to you and uh, for, for keeping the, all, everything yeah. on time. And yes. Mirav behind the scenes, keeping yeah. us organized. Exactly. And uh, yeah, you know what? It was nice to meet you. It's always nice to have different guests and people on and talk about, you know, different things. I think topics, you had a so. lot of fun here. I had yeah. a lot of fun. Cool. I was nervous at the beginning, but as it's okay, okay, I'm still nervous. After (laughs) after 10 years of doing this, I'm still nervous. Every time I get on the air, I'm like, oh my God, something's going to happen. And usually something always does happen. (laughs) I.e. today, I broke the phone and I broke the texting. I don't know how I did it, but the phone's not working and the texting is not working. So anyway. But uh, before we cut this, Dr. John, reach out. Because you you have the courage to say that out loud. Reach out. You're not the only one. And I believe that among each other, we are smart enough that we have enough knowledge that we can share. And as a peer, it's easier to share. Because at least I know what it feels to be in your shoes and you might know what it feels to be in mine. So uh, screw pride. Honestly, screw, screw pride. There's nothing out there. I agree. Have a great week, everyone. Bye, See you next week. <laughs>